ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. I have been to Israel many a time and one would think that by now it's another trip. I just came back a couple of weeks ago from seven very intensive days in Israel. I went to participate in the 60th anniversary of the creation of Bar Ilan University. A former teacher of mine, Dr. Pinchas Hurgen, had been the first president. Another teacher of mine, Rabbi Joseph H. Lukstein, was the chairman, the dean. There's a special word called Nagit in Hebrew of the university, or chancellor in English. And for a number of years, I've been very close to the university, helping them in many different ways. And I am part of the Board of Governors. So I went there to participate in this meeting that I thought would be very meaningful, and indeed it was. We went to the north to see the new medical school that was established three years ago. The buildings aren't ready yet. They are using some older buildings, but they have students. They have some students that came from Europe. Israel is studying in Europe and are finishing off in this school. Some of them already are doctors. Very exciting number of days in Israel. It always is exciting. But one of the salient points was also the inauguration of a Beit Midrash, which means a house of study as part of Bar Ilan University for women. And it bears the name of a deceased wife of a very dear friend of mine. And I stayed an extra day in order to be there at that time. I also met there my dear old friend, the chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, who used to be the chief rabbi of Israel, Israel Mayor Lau. As far as I'm concerned, he was the greatest chief rabbi as far as world Jewry is concerned. He was beloved not only in Israel, but throughout the Jewish world. He is an extraordinary speaker, a very moving and inspiring speaker. And I love to be in his company. He is also the president of the committee of Yad Vashem in Israel. He is a survivor, as you know, as a small child. He left Europe. Actually, it was his older brother, recently deceased, who saved him, put him into a sack and carried him on his shoulder and was able to escape the Nazis, went to Israel. And as you see, he reached to be the chief rabbi of Israel, and now chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, as he was prior to becoming chief rabbi of Israel. An extraordinary personality. A very good friend also of the deceased woman in whose name this Beit Midrash was established. And for a moment he delved and he said, why should we go to Israel? Why do we go to Israel? And he quoted the prophet Isaiah, Yeshayahu, it is a haftarah for the parasha kitavo, the ayah kitavo el ha'aretz, which speaks about making aliyah to Israel. When our ancestors were in the desert, God says, when you get to Israel, this is what you have to do. So this haftarah, which is from Isaiah 60, is read on that day. The haftarah says the following. You'll come to Israel like a cloud that is pushed by the wind, or like a dove that comes back to its nest. In a sense, you know, the nest of the Jewish people is the land of Israel. Or as a cloud, there were clouds that accompanied our ancestors while they were in the desert. But there is a difference between the two examples. A cloud has no movement by itself. It just goes where the wind leads it. You know, many Jews made Aliyah to Israel because they were pushed. They were pushed by negative circumstances from the Arab lands, from different parts of the world. We find right now in Europe a tremendous resurgence of anti-Semitism. And many people are moving to Israel. They feel that Europe, that has been their home for centuries, no longer wants to give them space. There are different reasons for it. I don't think it's sufficient to say that because there is a large Muslim population in Israel. Because there is a very famous book by Goldhagen called The Nazis Willing Collaborators. The Germans, many of the Germans helped the Nazis. Hitler wouldn't have been able to do, had there, to do what he did 
had there not been an innate anti-Semitism in many parts of Europe. The concentration camps would not have been tolerated were not for the fact that many people hated the Jewish people already from before. So that there is an aliyah that is due to the fact that we can't tolerate the circumstance in the land in which we live now and we want to go to Israel to escape from these negative reasons. But there is another type of aliyah also. The aliyah of the dove that goes back to its nest. A Jew that realizes that his origin is really Israel. I was only in Israel for seven days, as I say to you. But you breathe the air of Israel for a Jew, it is totally different. If you observe the Jewish tradition, all hotels are kosher. Shabbat is Shabbat. Of course, there are some people that don't observe it. Not everybody does. But on the other hand, if you want to really observe Jewish tradition, there is no place like the state of Israel. The deceased came from a very accommodated family from Latin America. But they made Aliyah 40 years ago. They weren't being expelled from the country in which they lived and made their fortune. To the contrary. But this was really out of love for the Jewish people, for the state of Israel. So this was like a dove who is, that is going back to its nest. But yet again, I don't think we should really differentiate between the two. There are those that are obligated to go and those that want to go. I think Israel is big enough to encompass them all, whether it's a positive reason or a negative reason. You really become reborn again in Israel. If you want to live like a Jew, there is no other place in the world as the state of Israel.